Hello everyone, my name is D.M. Rawlings, and these are my 15-ish tips for using Legend Keeper. If you're new to Legend Keeper, Legend Keeper is a campaign management tool used by dungeon masters, writers, to build worlds. Uh, you can upload maps, you can create wiki articles and associate them together through a series of pins in order to create a, a robust world uh, for yourself and something that you can share to others or do collaborative world building with. Today is December 29th, 2019, and we are on build 171 today. The reason I mention that is Legend Keeper is in open beta, and that means that there are constantly changes that are coming out, and the version that you might be using by the time you see this video may not exactly match the video there, what, I, what you see here on this video today. So, Let's begin by looking at the project page. This is where you can create brand new projects as well as enter the projects that you currently have created. Now, when we click on here, we get to see my map. If at any point you want to get back to that screen, you just need to click on this LK icon right up here at the top. So, first thing that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about right clicking the map page. So when I right click anywhere where there isn't a pin, I have the ability to create a pin. When I do that, I have the ability to create a brand new wiki article, or I can find an existing article and relate that pin to that particular object. In this case, we're gonna create something new. We are going to create a pin called Steve. So here's Steve right here. He's appearing kinda out on the ocean. When we click him, we can give him a uh, we can look at his article here on the sidebar, but when we right-click any given uh, pin, we are given three options. We have the ability to go to its wiki article directly, the ability to see its map page if a map page exists, we have the ability to change the visibility settings of this particular pin. So right now you can see that members are able to see this pin, but I could just as easily toggle it off and then someone is not going to be able to see that pin when they log in if they're a member of this account. And I'll get to more on permissions a little bit later. Last option is the ability to unpin it, which will remove the pin from the article, but it, or pin from the map, but it will not remove the, the base article itself. Let's just do that now. Next up, the ability to double click. If a location happens to have a map associated to it, and that's the way that Legend Keeper works. You can have a top level article that has a map attached to it, and then you can have a pin on that map that has a map of its own. So let's take a look at that. If I click here, I can see my main city egress. And if I click this a second time, it's gonna take me to that map page. But there are other options for navigating there as well. Let me click back. So what I can do is I can also click on the map button up here, or if I wanted to, I can just shift click on a given city and it will allow me to go straight to that location. So on this map, we can see that there are a variety of options here on the right hand side on this menu here. These ones allow for you to kind of zoom around. Of course, you can also drag, use the center wheel of the mouse in order to move around as well. But other options here that are quite powerful include the ability to filter based on tags that you have created on the respective wiki articles. So I believe that I have one called store. And when I select that, what it's going to do is it's going to remove all of the articles that don't match that criteria. And I can remove them just by clicking this little X here. Second up, I have the ability to lock or unlock my pins. So let's say I created a pin and it's in the wrong spot. Uh, maybe something moved and you want to get it to a new location. All you have to do is unlock the pin and then you have the ability to kind of move around and do whatever you want. Uh, of course, once you've locked them, can't move that at all. Uh, the last thing is the ability to cluster or uncluster pins. So when you cluster pins, what ends up happening is all pins within a similar region will get blown down into one little one. And when you click, what it will do is zoom in and show you all of those specific details. Uh, this can be really useful if you've got an area that has a whole bunch of different pins that are all super close and it's impossible to click on any given one of them and you just can't see the map underneath it. But in general, I tend to avoid pin clustering 
because I want to be able to access each of the different locations that happens to be on my map. Next up, you have the ability to search. So when you type things in here, this is going to show you everything that matches those criteria on your wiki articles. But one of those features that I think is a little bit lesser known in the Legend Keeper app is if you click on this magnifying glass and perform a search, what it's going to do is it's only going to show you pins that are located on this map. So if I click on the Old Town field, then what it will do is it will zoom in and center that on the page for me. So really useful for finding things if you know something is on a map, you just don't know where it is or it's hidden amongst other pins. Great, so let's hop over now over onto the wiki side. And you can access that by clicking the little book icon here on the left. So here is uh, the wiki section. And the first thing that I want to show you is across the top, you have a series of pinned articles. So here we've got every single article under the sun. And then here, my planes article has been pinned up at the top. And this just allows for me to navigate these a little bit faster. So egress, the core city of my campaign, is one that I put at the top so that my players can get to it very quickly. Then Codex, some of the lore of my world is here. If I want to add something, like let's say for instance religion was a major part of my Chronicle, which in my particular case it is, all I have to do is drag this up to the top. And now that's added that as a new pin. And when I click on it, it will rapidly go to these locations and display the content that's there. If I want to get rid of something, I just drag it off and now it's gone. You can have a maximum of five different pins at the top. So you can see all plus five more. Next up, we have a few options here on the sidebar. So we have the option to minimize all of your page trees down to nothing. You have the ability to maximize everything and blow it all out so you can see every single article. And then you have the ability to hop to a specific article that you're currently viewing. So right now I'm looking at the religion article. If I click this button, what it's going to do is that's going to find that article on the sidebar. And if I was here, and maybe I had something for the Dragonborn right here, and then I close this all off, I can just click and it's going to open up so that I'm able to see this particular thing and find it on this sidebar rather quickly. Lastly, when it comes to this wiki sidebar, once again, you have the ability to do a few things by right clicking. So when I right click, I have the ability to create uh, an article that will be hidden underneath. It'll be the child of that particular article. Uh, so I can just hit create there. I can rapidly hop to the share settings uh, or I can remove that record for all of time, which we're not going to press today. Uh, in terms of other options, when you are in a section, there's also this plus button here that allows for you to create that article that would automatically be located underneath it. Cool, so let's move on to editing. And to do that, I've got a particular set of articles that I've created here. So here is my 15 tips article that shows off a whole bunch of things. First thing we're going to do is we're going to hop into the edit section and we're going to take a closer look at this. So down here, first thing to take a look at is the context menu. When you have content that you're looking at, you can select it and then this context menu is going to appear. It's going to let you do all of those basic things like bold and subscript and underline and all of that formatting that you typically like. But there's a few more options like creating a link as well as things like making changes to the header type. Uh, so you can make something a header, you can surround it in a block quote, you can create a secret area, you can add lists. So let's just walk through what some of those options are. So here is a header right here, and a subheader, and then normal text. This is text that's in a block quote. Here is a ordered list, as they call it. I wish it was called a numbered list but it's not. This is a secret area. These secrets are only visible to people who are administrators of the uh, area. And then here we have a bit more text and we have a bulleted list. So how do we create all of those? Well, the easiest way 
to create headings as far as I'm concerned is if you type in the hashtag symbol, the pound symbol or whatever you want to call it, and press space, that's going to create a header one, basically the highest uh, level uh, of a header. So header one. And then underneath that, if you put two and do a space, that is the second largest. And you can go down pretty far, like all the way down to at least the fifth one by typing in extra hashtags before you type things. So that just helps you format things, make things a little bit more clear. Uh, in addition to that, if you wanted to create a bulleted list, you can type the asterisk key, press the space, and it's going to let you do that. While you're here, you can also hit tab, and it's going to let you do an embedded uh, tab list. And you can go as far as you want to here. And then if you want to go back, it's just shift tab will move you back towards ordinary text. And then if you have numbered lists, type one dot, press space, it'll turn that into a numbered list for you. And allow you to create that. And again, you can do several layers of this, and you can also shift tab to go back. Great. Let's move on to the slash menu, which is something that if you don't know about when you're using Legend Keeper, you're in for a bad time and it's not necessarily very close to the surface that you're able to do this. If you just type the slash key it's going to pull up this menu bar here that's going to give you access to a lot of the same things that we talked about in the context menu but it lets you do it a little bit more in line and a little bit faster. But there are some options here that you didn't have when you were creating things in the context menu. So if I wanted to create a new article, for instance, a new wiki article, I can just click this here. Whereas before I had to type the name of the article, now what I can do is I can type, I can just enter slash article, and then it's going to let me create a new article. Or what I can do is I can go back and I can find Steve from before and select it. And that's gonna link that to the Steve article that I had before. All right, what else can we do? Well. We can also attach images by using slash image. And once you're here, you got access to a whole bunch of stuff. So let's just add Sam. Now we have that picture of a Sam that is in line in our article. Other stuff, uh, I'm just gonna save this and I'll, I'll show you. You have the ability to create table of contents, which use these headers to build an automatic list for you that shows you all of the different things that you've created. And then you also have the ability to do what's called a sub article index. So this is going to show you every single page that is directly underneath the page that you're currently working on. So this is my 15 tips article and you can see people who make shows and viruses differently are both listed here as sub articles. And obviously if you click them, just like with the headers, it's going to hop to that and just make it a little bit more visually easy to find the things that you need to use. One more thing you can do on this particular side is you can type in slash generate and you can get access to the generators component of Legend Keeper. There's a lot to generators and I'm not going to cover them all here, but basically what this allows you to do is create randomly generate content based on user things that you've entered. So if you wanted to have like a person generator, this person is a dwarf, their name is Steve. Uh, everyone's named Steve, I guess. Uh, and Steve runs a shop that sells this product. You can create a generator that would allow for you to randomly fill in a bunch of like Steve, Mary, Sue, Tom, etc. And then every time that you go to this page, you can click the re-roll and that's going to give you some new options here. And then when you like them, you can just go insert and that will put them directly into your text. So you can use that to rapidly generate a whole bunch of, say, towns, maybe stores, maybe inns, maybe people uh, in rapid succession. But like I said, I'm going to attach a link to my tutorial on how to use those. It's a text tutorial uh, in the video below. Those are generators. So one more thing I want to show you before we get out of here is if I have something like a block quote or a secret and I want to get rid of it, all I need to do is go back to the initial position, remove all the text, hit the backspace button, and it's gone. 
And then the other one is if I'm at the very bottom of my page, let's say that line doesn't exist, and I want to exit out, it could be a little confusing to figure out how to get there. In order to do that, all you need to do is hit enter when you're on a blank line, and it will exit you out onto the next particular section. So, now we've talked about everything in the slash menu. Let's move on to at mentions. So while you're writing an article, very often you're referring to other articles that you've already written. And it can be incredibly valuable to link your content together so that there's this never ending series of clicks that someone can make to find out more about the world while they're in it. And the fastest way to do that, well, there's two ways. I'll show you one way now and then I'll show you auto linking a little bit later in this tutorial. But if you type in at and you start to write things, then it will start making suggestions. And the more you write, the more isolated those are going to be, is a nice guy. There we go. So linking articles like that is very useful. And then on Hover, what you can do is you can see a little bit about them and what they're all about, provided that you built out that content before. So at mentions, something that you can do to link those articles together, very useful. Ah, yes. So this is one of the most buried commands in all of Legend Keeper. And I've already shown you an example of it. It's right here. It's this horizontal line. So how do we make those? The only way to do it is with a command. And it is shift control underscore. You hold those together, it'll do that. Or shift command underscore on a Mac. It will create that horizontal rule for you. Great. So, something that is asked almost every day on the Legend Keeper Discord that I recommend that you join is how do I replace a map? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. You just need to go to the article that your map belongs to. So, let's just get back to uh, my city here. Click on up here to get access to the wiki for this particular article and I can click on the edit button and while I have the edit menu open I'm able to go over here to attach map and then go in and browse find the one that I I wanted to use or I can upload a brand new one select it and then I can click done now is that going to throw off all of the pins that you created before well it really depends if the file that you are using is the exact same size as the one that previously existed, all of those pins will stay in the exact same XY location that they were before. If you upload something that has a different size, then obviously things are going to need to be uh, moved around a little bit. But that's one of the great things about Legend Keeper is if you have several versions of the same map and you're using the same uh, canvas size, then you don't have to go in and place those pins every single time, unless when your world creation you moved a bunch of buildings around on the image, in which case, yeah, obviously you're going to have to do that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about tags. So when you edit an article, you have the ability to add these tags that help you refer to them later and do things like the filtered searching that we saw at the map. So what does that look like here? Well, I can look at Sam Jack and all articles that match that by doing that here. Just keep in mind that when you are entering in these parameters, like let's say I also add peasant here, Sam Jackson is obviously not a peasant, but anything that hits either the peasant moniker or the Sam Jack are going to appear on the same list here. So we remove peasant and now we're only seeing Sam Jack related articles. So how do we add things? Well, we just go over here and we add whatever one that we want to. So if I wanted to add Sam Jack to this, I definitely can. But but take a look at this. We have a Sam Jack with uh, J-A-K and a Sam Jack with J-A-C-K. So obviously this one is incorrect. I made a typo at some point. This one is correct. I'll select this one for now, but what I wanted to do was give you a very quick way to be able to figure out how to remove those pins or those tags when you've made a mistake. To do that, what you'll want to do is you'll want to go into this sidebar here and type in, when you're under the All section, the bad one. And then go here and expand. 
and it will show you at the very bottom of each of these trees that appear articles where that tag was used. So here we can see Sam Jack was used in this particular article. If I edit this and I remove it, so long as that is the last instance of that tag being used, it will delete it and make it not available when I want to add things later. So here, now that it's been removed, if I type in Sam Jack, I'm not seeing the bad spelling anymore, I'm only seeing the correct one. Let's give that a save. Earlier I mentioned as well that there are two different ways to reference articles. Originally the at mention is the one that I tend to use a lot, but once you finish writing a whole bunch of content, you may want some kind of tool that just looks through all of the different articles that you've got and creates those links for you. Luckily, Legend Keeper has you covered. So when you edit, there's these three dots right here, and there's this auto link option. We give that a click, and what it's going to do is it's going to scan the content of this page and compare it to the names of all of the articles that you've created in Legend Keeper. And here I can see that there's three different instances where articles exist uh, that are linked to text in this particular article. And a la carte, I can go in and I can choose individually which one should be added, or I can click on that big checkbox up there at the top, and that's going to select all of those together in one spot. So when I click insert, what it's going to do is it's going to replace that text with a link that goes directly to those articles. So we can save it, and now if I click here, it goes directly to this particular page. Great, so last topic of the 15-ish topics that we were going to cover today is permissions. And permissions are incredibly powerful in Legend Keeper. You have the ability to have very granular control over who is able to see what. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So when I am looking at an article, I have the ability to edit it, click the three dots, go into the sharing section, or if I want to be faster, I can just right click on the sidebar, go into share. And what it's going to do is it's going to show me the default members role as well as the permission that this particular article has. When you create a brand new article, it will always start with the inherit permission. And the inherit permission says, okay, look at the article that this belongs to and do whatever that article is. So for instance, if I'm looking at the I'm not a mistake article, and we share there, it's going to inherit. It's going to look at the viruses differently and see if there's a permission there. It might say inherit, in which case then we would go to the 15 tips article to figure out what its permission should be. But it might also say something different. So if I wanted to change the permission for the I'm not a mistake article, I can go in, I can change it to you can read, but can't see hidden things. Uh, I can give members the ability to edit it, uh, but in general what I'm doing is I'm removing their ability to see it. So I can select no access there and that would make this individual article inaccessible to anyone who's a member and not an admin of my account. And we'll show you what those look like in a bit. But I'm not going to in this case because I know for a fact that this virus is differently is already set to no access. So any pages that are underneath it that are set to inherit will automatically do that. So my players, if they logged in right now, would be able to see the 15 tips article, but they could not see viruses differently, nor the I'm not a mistake article, which is really, really cool. All right, next thing you are able to go in with even more granular permissions than that. Right now we're looking at people who make shows and I'm going to click on this advanced button here and now I have a list of all of the different members of my particular group and I can go in a la carte and go you know what I want this guy to be able to read this article and select it on an individual basis. Uh, so if I had to say uh, player character and they had some specific lore that only they were aware of, I can set permissions for an article so that only they can see it. Great. So I told you that I was going to give you a little bit more information about the settings side of things. Settings is located down here if I click on my profile image. So by default I'm able to do things here like set up my project name as well as set up the default location when people load into this project. But here 
under user and roles, I have the ability to invite additional people and I can assign their primary role. <coughs> and their primary role is going to be either an admin or a member. And of course, I'm the owner of my project. So admins have the ability to edit everything and see everything, where members are the ones that have individual controls that we were looking at earlier. And I can swap people back and forth between them if I really want to, but we're not gonna do that. Uh, the other thing that I can do is I can hop into the global permissions area and I can set permissions on a more global scale. My default, I just turn everything off because when I say I don't want someone to be able to do something, I know that that's what I want. I don't want people ever to be able to delete my maps because my players are trolls. Uh, so I just lock that down. Cool. Well, last thing here is there is a Discord that is available for Legend Keeper. You can access it at the link there, or if you're in the Legend Keeper account, you can just click on this little guy right here to get to it. And if you see something in the app and you're like, hey, I really would like this to be improved, down here on the bottom right hand side is a feedback area where it can pop open all of the different requests that have been late, been made lately, and you can take a look at what those are. And if someone hasn't submitted it yet, then you can go ahead and make a suggestion and then that's something that might get worked on at a future time. Anyways, thank you very much for your time. Enjoy legend keeping.